Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habata fillah As Ramadan is winding down, coming to an end Wallahu musta'an We hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has favored you With benefiting from this holy month of Ramadan And that you are a better believer, a better Muslim Coming and that you've come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and established a relationship with the Qur'an, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with that being said, it reminds me, and this is just a reflection, as Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, al usul al in the beginning when he talked about the four principles, and he said, "Alam rahimakallah, innu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al ula al ilm huwa ma'rufat Allah, ma'rufat al Nabi, wa ma'rufat al Din al Islami bi adilla." So he said, "Alam <coughs> rahimakallah, know that verily there are four things that every Muslim should know." And he said, "The first thing." Al-ula al-ilm. The first thing is knowledge. And that a person should have knowledge of who Allah is and who the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is and the religion of Islam with textual proofs. And that right there, that statement there is the statement of ilm. And that's what you hear from us, that we encourage you to seek knowledge <clears throat> and be better than us. Because many of us, we wasted so much of our lives and our times in Islam and we didn't seek any knowledge, we didn't better ourselves, we didn't uh, reform our character, we didn't practice the little that we may have gained, we may or may not have gained. Because some people, they don't open a book, they don't listen to a lecture, they don't do anything and they listen to any and everything. And so, then they don't actualize that wajib, that obligation upon them, which is to know, to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know Tawheed. Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. And knowing who the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because how can you say you know and you follow and you love someone and you don't know who they are, you don't know anything about them, and... You don't follow them at all. And we're ordered to follow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, wa rasul, and obey Allah and obey the Messenger. So we're ordered to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And we are ordered to learn about the textual proofs in Islam. Uh, you know, to know... Uh, Islam with textual proofs. So that way it isn't just about our opinions and it isn't about our desires. We're not always just saying, well, you know, I think, I feel like this opinion sounds, this view sounds better, this fatwa sounds good for me, this is more suitable for me, my sheikh said. But instead, when you have knowledge, you know, knowledge gives you a set of tools to be able to uh, practice your Islam better. And and that comes, that means practicing with Adilla. And that protects you from the Shubahat. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Taqul Shubahat, you know, stay away from the doubtful matters. Because the doubtful matters, those gray matters, those things will lead you into the haram. And the doubtful matters I'm referring to is the doubtful matters could be, especially with Aqidah, with creed, that you can. Uh, you know, come up with all kind of false beliefs if you listen to the people and you do not know and understand and learn about your deen, learn about your creed. And then the imam, he mentioned, he said, after knowing the deen of Islam, he said, and this is the very difficult thing for many of us 
uh, the second thing, so it's after gaining knowledge, then it's practicing that knowledge. And this is how the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, and Ijma'een were, that they, they would learn 10 ayats of the Qur'an, and then they would not go beyond that until they had practiced it and memorized. So, unlike us, we have our children to memorize the Qur'an and this and that and the other, and they may not ever know the meanings. Because, for example, certain communities, they put emphasis on their children learning Qur'an. And they're good at this, wilillahi alhamd. But they do not have their, do not, are not concerned with the other aspects of the religion of their children. So their children don't learn really that much about Tawheed. Their children don't learn much about creed in general. So, and their children are not grounded in Islam to really love Islam. And that's why you see many little gangsters out there, especially in the West, that it used to ha used to have had memorized the Quran. They used to know the Quran, but now they're in jail. But now they are in gangs. But now they're dead, being prayed over. Now we can't even find them. So this is uh, something very important. Is that that amal b is the practicing that knowledge. So it isn't simply that we just gain the knowledge and we memorize and this and that and the other. And those are beautiful things, but we have to practice. And this is difficult. From another janib, for many of us, is we fail to practice uh, basic things that we know. For example, avoiding the muharramat. This is so important. I can't emphasize that if someone wants to seek knowledge, they have to avoid the muharramat. This is going to help and make their hearts open to attaining knowledge. But if you indulge yourself in, muh in muharramat and you're seeking knowledge, there are people who are addicted to pornography and they are students. There are people who have uh, maybe drug addictions even, and they are, you know, maybe students even. And on and on and on, there are many problems, and this because it's because of the amal. It's so easy to preach. I can sit all day and we can just read a hadith and, and, and go through it, and, and I can share the limited knowledge that I can give to you, and, and it looks good, but practicing is something else. That's so difficult. It's so difficult to stay away from those things that you desire. And it's so difficult to do those things which uh, go against your desire. Maybe praying in the masjid. Maybe doing acts of ibadah that you need to do. Maybe refraining from backbiting is difficult for you. You need to be in that controversy. Certain people, they need the fitna. And so all of those things, that, that becomes difficult. Wallah, Mr. An. Then it's about giving da'wah. Then you share that knowledge with others. And the fourth thing is being patient on that, that, that path because there's going to be so many people who oppose you. Think about the mashayikh, the ulama. And way before the mashayikh, let's think about the NBA. that some of them, they had no one who followed them. Some of them who were rejected by their people Look at uh, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. And some of them were, uh, you know, they went through every kind of torment and difficulty and persecution and people speaking about their honor and speaking about them and attacking them physically. Look at the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So his seerah alone will, will illustrate that for us. So da'wah, the, 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 uh, Calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a patient process. And all of those things, I wanted to remind myself and then my brothers and sisters about it. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.